Welcome to episode number 347, where I'm discussing the insights Ayurveda shares about the qualities of the sweet taste. I'm going to talk about how this taste affects each dosha, its role in healing, and lots of tips on how to manage those sweet cravings. So please stay tuned. Hi there, I'm your host Colette, and on this podcast, I will be sharing the teachings of Ayurveda, yoga, and holistic health practices. Now, if you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend checking out the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. Thanks for listening, and now here is a new episode. Hey there, and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. It's Colette today for a solo episode talking all about the sweet taste and sugar cravings. Ayurveda teaches us the importance of balance in life, maintaining balance in the doshas of vata, pitta, and kapha to prevent illness, and balance in the mind, promoting the qualities of sattva for good mental health. Now, while promoting sattva to bring harmony, balance, and clarity, we still need a certain amount of the mental quality of rajas for inspiration and drive and the quality of tamas to counter the stimulating energy of rajas. So it's all about balance so that we can prevent mental and physical aggravations. Now, you can learn lots more about Ayurveda mental health in episode number 206. And we also want to live in harmony or balance with our environment. And Ayurveda gives us lots of guidelines on how to do this with our daily dinacharya or self-care practices and the richacharya, seasonal routines. Maintaining holistic balance sets us up to have great physical, mental and emotional well-being and promotes longevity with vitality. Now, Ayurveda also teaches us about balance in the diet and the importance of having all the six tastes in the diet. And those six tastes are sweet, sour, salty, pungent, bitter, and astringent. These tastes play an important role in our health, from stimulating our agni, our digestive fire, to balancing the doshas and supporting our health and well-being. I discuss these tastes and their effect on the doshas in detail in episode number 26. And in this episode, I want to focus on the sweet taste. So let's get started here with the basics. The sweet taste is made up of the earth and water elements, the same elements as the kapha dosha. The sweet taste has the following gunas or qualities, heavy, wet, cold, oily, soft, grounding, building, and nourishing. The sweet taste builds and strengthens the seven datus or tissues of the body and improves the complexion, skin, and hair. It's energizing. It increases ojas, which is our prime energy reserve, and boosts our immunity. The sweet taste grounds the body, nourishes the senses, provides lubrication and stimulates saliva, improves circulation, strengthens the heart, relieves thirst and heartburn as it has a cooling and calming effect on the body and mind. The sweet taste also promotes sattva, love, compassion, stability, vitality, clarity and awareness. Sweetness as a taste sensation starts on the tongue. And the sweet taste receptors are at the front of the tongue, right at the tip. Each taste bud is covered with bodhika kapha, a subdosha of kapha, which is present in saliva. And once the sweet taste receptor is stimulated, a message is sent to the brain where sweet taste perception arises. The sweet taste receptors can be activated by natural sugars like glucose, fructose, sucrose, and maltose and artificial sweeteners like saccharin, aspartame, and cyclamate, and sweet amino acids. Many carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are considered sweet, 
And here are just some examples of the sweet taste. Obviously, we have sweet fruits like bananas, melons, dates, and figs. Root vegetables are considered sweet like beetroot, carrots when they're cooked, and sweet potatoes. Grains like rice, wheat, and corn have the sweet taste. And proteins, fish like salmon, beef, eggs, and beans. Nuts like almonds, cashews, and coconut. And sweeteners and seasonings like cinnamon, mint, cardamom, fennel, nutmeg, and vanilla all contain the sweet taste. So let's take a look at how the sweet taste affects each dosha type. Starting with a kapha dosha, because the sweet taste has the same elements as the kapha dosha, the elements of earth and water, it therefore can increase kapha. An excess of sweet taste will aggravate the kapha dosha and can cause sluggishness in the digestive system, leading to congestion, mucus, colds, coughs, a feeling of heaviness, lethargy, and excess tissues in the body, leading to obesity. It can also lead to conditions like lymphatic congestion, edema, which is swelling, diabetes, and an overgrowth of tissues in the body, like in the case of tumors. Emotionally, overconsumption of the sweet taste can lead to attachment, greed, and possessiveness, and potentially resulting in depression. The best natural sweetener for the kapha dosha is raw, unprocessed and unheated honey. You do not want to heat honey as it can alter its beneficial properties and make it toxic according to Ayurveda. So honey is considered balancing for the kapha dosha in Ayurveda due to its heating, astringent, light and dry qualities, which counter the cool, moist, heavy, sticky and sluggish qualities of the kapha dosha. Honey also has a scraping action, which is beneficial for reducing any accumulation of kapha in the body. Honey supports mental clarity and focus, which counters the foggy mind of aggravated kapha. The seat of kapha is in the lungs, which can make kapha prone to respiratory illness when aggravated, and honey is very effective in managing respiratory issues. Honey is also a digestive aid, stimulating the agni and countering kapha's tendency towards a sluggish digestion. However, it's important for kapha not to overconsume honey, as the vipak or post-digestive effect is sweet and therefore it can still increase kapha, so use in moderation. Okay, let's move on to the vata dosha. Because the sweet taste contains the opposite elements of vata, sweet being made up of the water and earth elements versus vata space and air elements, these opposites make the sweet taste pacifying for vata. The qualities of the earth and water elements provide grounding and calm for the stimulated vata nervous system, nourishment, building and rejuvenation of the tissues, and lubrication for the normally dry vata body. Sweeteners which are recommended for vata will be jaggery, which is unrefined cane sugar, as it has warm and moist qualities. Date sugar, which is made from dried dates, is nourishing and grounding, and raw honey in small amounts, as it's grounding and warming also. And finally, the pitta dosha. The sweet taste balances pitta as the earth and water elements provide qualities of cooling to counter pitta's heat, heaviness to counter pitta's light quality, and a calming quality to counter the sharpness and intensity of the pitta mind and emotions. The sweet taste relieves thirst, burning, inflammation, and intensity, all of which can be experienced when pitta is aggravated. And sweeteners which are recommended for pitta dosha would be coconut sugar, rock sugar, maple syrup, and barley malt, all of which contain the cooling quality to help pacify the pitta dosha. Of course, always choose natural, unprocessed, and organic sweeteners, which our body will recognize and avoid the ultra-processed foods and beverages which contain highly refined and artificial sweeteners. So really best to stay away from any artificial sweeteners and choose the natural ones. 
By selecting the right type of natural sugar based on your dosha, you can help maintain balance and support your overall well-being in accordance with the Ayurvedic principles. Now, along with that awareness of the source of your sweet taste or sweetener, we also need to be very aware of overindulgence in the sweet taste. The sweet taste can have a calming and grounding effect on our emotions, promoting feelings of contentment and satisfaction, which is why many people crave sweet foods when feeling stressed or anxious. From a young age, we associate the sweet taste with nurturing, comfort, and happiness, and this can provide us with a sense of emotional comfort and security. However, it can lead to a dependency on comfort foods, which are often sweet in taste. A lot of times people might experience sweet cravings in the evenings after dinner, and this can result in emotional eating. Managing sugar cravings with Ayurveda involves a holistic approach that includes dietary adjustments, lifestyle practices, and stress management to balance the doshas and promote overall well-being. Here are some strategies that you may find helpful. First of all, making sure that your meals are well balanced with carbs, proteins, and healthy fats to keep you satiated and to include the six tastes is important to reduce cravings. Now, of course, all this needs to be tailored to each individual depending on the the carbs, the proteins, and the fats you choose and the amount of each taste that you have. And this is something I talk about in detail in my consultations putting together a detailed individualized food plan with food lists for your unique constitution and planning your meals and meal times to ensure that you're eating in a regular schedule. This will make sure that you're not reaching for a quick sugar fix to solve your lagging energy levels due to unplanned meals. Of course, you want to practice eating mindfully so that you're actually registering what you're eating and enjoying the taste, which can reduce overindulgence and cravings. And staying well hydrated is important as thirst can often be mistaken for hunger or cravings. Having natural sweet tasting foods, as I mentioned earlier, like sweet fruits and root vegetables, grains and nuts like almonds to satisfy the sweet cravings rather than having the refined sugars. And of course, Mother Nature gives us wonderful fruits during the summer season with lots of that sweet taste to help pacify pitta and vata during the hot season. Fruits like watermelon, stone fruits, sweet grapes, and and so much more. So that sweet taste is definitely good during the hot season. And making sure that you're eating these fruits and vegetables in their whole form rather than a juiced form, which removes the fiber and will only spike your blood sugar and cause a crash afterwards. So if you're having these fruits and veggies, make sure it's either in their whole form or even a smoothie is fine because that still contains the fiber. Talking about blood sugar, cinnamon is a wonderful spice to balance your blood sugar and it can help to prevent sugar cravings. Add it to your morning oatmeal, your smoothies, or enjoy a cinnamon tea. Now, cinnamon has a hot energy, and so it's pacifying for vata and kapha, but it will increase pitta. So best to avoid cinnamon during the hot weather if you have a high pitta constitution or a pitta aggravation. Fenugreek seeds are also known to balance blood sugar levels and reduce cravings. And fenugreek seeds are also hot in energy and pacifying for vata and kapha, but will increase pitta. So if you have a high pitta constitution again or pitta aggravation, you need to be aware of that. But if you have a vata or kapha constitution, soaking a teaspoon of fenugreek seeds overnight and consuming them in the morning on an empty stomach is great. Or if you want to make a tea, you could do that by boiling one teaspoon of fenugreek seeds in one cup of water for three to five minutes, letting it soak and then straining and enjoying that. Licorice is a great one to use because it's naturally sweet and a licorice tea can really help to satisfy a sweet craving after meals, for example. Licorice also has an affinity for the respiratory system and it's very beneficial for congestion in the lungs. Licorice is tridoshic, and so this is a good one for pitta to choose to help satisfy sweet cravings, but it can aggravate cough and excess, so best to use in moderation for cough. 
And then fennel seeds and mint both have a mild sweet taste. They are tridoshic, but mint can increase vata in excess, so be aware of that. But these are great teas to sip on after a meal. If you have that sweet craving that a lot of people get after a meal, having a fennel tea or mint tea can give you that mild sweet taste and also aid digestion and help to prevent gas and bloating, which is a benefit of both of these. And then we have to consider lifestyle and stress management also, because these factors have a big impact on our sweet cravings. The stress hormone cortisol can increase our appetite and our cravings for foods that are high in sugar. Good quality sleep. And regular exercise can help to manage our blood sugar levels, improve digestion, and reduce stress, which will curb those cravings. And mindfulness practices like yoga, meditation, pranayama can also help to reduce stress and bring awareness to our emotions to help us process them, preventing emotional eating and stress-induced cravings. And of course, regular cleansing is very beneficial here. Not only during the cleansing process will you eliminate any poor diet and lifestyle practices, but you'll also eliminate the accumulated amor toxins and any accumulation in doshas, improve the digestion and reduce sugar cravings. I've had numerous clients eliminate their sugar cravings post-cleanse as they have not only reset their taste buds, their taste buds are more sensitive to that sweet taste, but also implemented the Ayurvedic practices and principles into their daily routine to help them effectively manage sugar cravings and maintain balance and well-being. And if you would like support, please check out my online services on my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com. And my next group cleanse will be October 4th to help with that transition from summer to autumn. And of course, I have my private cleanse available throughout the year. And this is where you get to choose your own dates and you have me one-on-one for support. And I also have my online consultations where I put together a strategy for your current health status. And that strategy includes diet, lifestyle, self-care, mindfulness, exercise, Anything else I think that would help you maintain balance, of course, I address any current imbalances. And I also have my educational program, the Daily Habits for Holistic Health, which is a 28-day online self-paced program with the objective to help you live in tune with the circadian rhythm, and it educates you on how to become your own healer. Now, if you have any questions before you book any of my online services, then take advantage of my free 15-minute services inquiry call where we can hop on zoom and I can answer all of your questions. So there you go. I hope you found this episode beneficial. And if you think this episode will be helpful to family or friends, please share it with them so we can spread this wisdom of Ayurveda. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed the podcast, please do so. And the new weekly episodes will automatically download for you. If you feel like you're getting benefit from this podcast, I would really appreciate a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcast. Please join me on social media. You can find me on Facebook under Elements Healing and Wellbeing. And my new Instagram page is Elements of Ayurveda Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Be well. And bye for now. Slongafold.